Immune system deficiency. Winter's coming. Coughs, colds, flus, COVID. It's time to understand how you could be immune deficient and how immune deficiency could impact you. It's also time to discover what you can do about it. Imagine you could miss out on the 400 plus colds and the half dozen flus that you might catch in your lifetime just by building the strongest immune system that you possibly can. If you're interested in finding out how, keep watching. Health Explorer Neil Fellows here and if you're interested in getting healthy and fit and staying healthy and fit and you want to do it in a way that's natural and unique to you, then why not subscribe and hit the bell? In this video, we're gonna talk about immune system deficiency and how you can sidestep bugs. Joining me is nutritionist and lifestyle coach, Dr. Chris Picard. So Chris, how does someone's immune system become deficient? How long have you got to me to answer this? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the shit. Basically, your immune system is made up of, well, lots of different cells. And in order for you to make those cells, you need all the raw ingredients to actually make those cells. And if you haven't got those ingredients, you can't make the cells. So the first and most obvious things are the vitamins and minerals that are needed in every single process in your body to help make things like your white blood cells. So if you aren't getting enough um, uh, B vitamins, uh, magnesium, zinc um, and a few others then you're not going to be able to make the cells that are needed and most people in the UK have usually at least got one deficiency of some kind or insufficiency I should say but there are also what are called optimal ranges of nutrients um, for optimal health and these aren't really looked into so much by medicine so most people fall outside the optimal ranges for optimal health and so most people aren't that immune system isn't optimal. It may not be deficient, but it's not optimal. So first of all, we got the raw ingredients. Another big raw ingredient that nearly, I mean, everyone I've tested has been deficient in this is omega-3 fats. You need omega-3 fats for your immune system. You need omega-3 fats to make your immune, your, all of your cells. And nobody I've tested, including myself, has had optimal levels of omega-3s unless they really start supplementing. So there's omega-3s, raw materials, protein. This is another big problem. Um, one of the most important cells in your immune system is called, or most important chemicals, not cells, chemicals in your immune system is, a, is something called glutathione. Now, glutathione is important for not just your immune system it's needed to recycle other antioxidants to basically to stop rusting in your body it's needed for your gut to work properly it's needed for your inflammatory system to work properly as well your anti-inflammatory system to work properly and it's made from protein and most people these days don't actually eat enough quality protein they just eat a load of rubbish protein so most people their glutathione levels are actually too low or insufficient as well so you have vitamins and minerals fats and proteins and then you have the fact that people are too sedentary because if you don't exercise enough you don't actually make enough glutathione even if you've got enough protein this is one of the reasons why exercise is so good for your immune system but also if you exercise too much you end up actually depleting your glutathione so you've got to get exercise just right so basically not enough exercise immune system problem too much exercise immune system problem. Then you've got sleep. Sleep is a big, big, big issue. Um, I think, was it Dr. Chatterjee? Um, he's been on TV quite a lot promoting wellness. He's yeah. written a book called, I think, The Four Pillars of Wellness. He goes big time into sleep being such a big problem. And so many people aren't getting enough sleep. They're getting less than eight hours. They're getting less than seven hours. And unless you get enough sleep, your immune system won't work properly. And then you have stress. Stress shatters the immune system. Mm -hmm. So lots of negative emotions, fear, of which there's loads of fear and stress and worry, that depletes the immune system like almost instantly. So you've got all this, and then the other thing that begins with this that everyone's getting too much of is sugar. Too much sugar, too much junk food, too much rubbishy, refined junk, whether it's a Coke, or whether it's a, a McDonald's, and these things start obliterating the immune system. So at the moment, 
we are dealing with a country that's stressed. <laughs> they're allowed to have junk food, but they're not allowed to exercise, and yeah. they're not being told to have enough nutrients. So basically, at the moment, we are ripe for having immune system problems. Yeah, There's probably more. Yeah. But I'll stop there. Yeah, stop there. I mean, just just pick it up on the sugar aspect of, of what you're, you're talking about. I've heard somewhere once that when we, we we take in sugar, it knocks our immune system out for roughly about six hours. Um, any truth? Yes. Yeah. Um, now that is something that I think there is some truth to it, but also at the same time, glucose is something you need for your immune system to work as well. Mm. So if you don't have enough, or if you can't make, but we can make our own glucose because we've got it stored as glycogen in our liver and our muscles. Mm. So most of us have got enough to make the immune system work anyway. But yeah, too much um, sugar does have a detrimental effect on the immune system. For it can be, I think I've read it. It can be up to 24 hours. But I haven't done enough research to actually definitively say yes or no as to how long that lasts for. Yeah. So someone with an immune um, system deficiency what are the, the, the what, what are they going to find happens to them I, I, obviously the, the obvious one is they're going to get ill but um, what else happens well the immune system is pretty big and complicated and I am not an immunologist okay and the top immunologists on the planet they keep on saying, we do not understand the immune system fully. We don't know how this works. We don't actually even know, apparently, how viruses spread. We don't actually know how viruses spread. But there's actually still a lack of evidence about what exactly really is a virus anyway. And so the top immunologists are saying, look, we probably only understand about 1% of the immune system and how it works and how it interacts and what viruses are and all these things. So, so for me, who's not an immunologist, it's like, well, the immune system, when it breaks down, it can cause, you could literally name a problem. And in some way, the immune system is related. Now, inflammatory system, so inflammation and pain, which people used to, is very much tied up with um, the immune system. They actually work together. And um, so you can have autoimmune conditions starting to happen because the immune system isn't working properly. There's something that's caused an issue somewhere and your body starts attacking itself um, you can be tired and fatigued because so much energy is going into making immune cells it's not going into making red blood cells so you can't deliver nutrients and oxygen it can result in things like fibromyalgia aches and pains arthritic conditions um, as well as just feeling cold all the time and then you know maybe your, your gut maybe you've got gut issues you're, you're bloated you're constipated your diarrhea um, skin rashes um, literally the immune system is involved in so many different processes as a whole that you could literally end up with it, whatever you've got it could be in some way related to the immune system yeah, yeah. so probably need to address the elephant in the room COVID-19 mm. so talking about the immune system um, so people with I think I know the answer to this question but I want to ask it anyway in case anyone's unsure if somebody has a depleted or deficient immune system, are they going to be more susceptible to COVID-19? Well, the thing that has really come out of a lot of the research into COVID-19 is the fact that it, seem, it seems to be more than any other virus that's been studied, the one that is most related to multiple deficiencies, like vitamins and minerals. And say so, yes is the answer, but you seem to, it seems to have to be, you have to have a pretty critical deficiency in something. But it seems to be the virus that is the most susceptible to then addressing those needs almost mm. within a few days. So, for instance, vitamin D, yeah, we know that in Spain, um, there's one trial where they just, people were sick with COVID. And they basically just injected them with vitamin D and all of them recovered. Nobody died. Wow. And you compared that and they compared it to just giving drugs and the drugs that were being given, 50% of people went into intensive care and some of them died. Whereas when they were given vitamin D as well as the drugs, I should actually say, when they were given vitamin D as well as the drugs, 
only 2% of those went into ICU and nobody died. Yeah. But this has also been borne out with just simply giving a multivitamin to people who have been sick in hospital with COVID and giving a multivitamin actually halved the people going into ICU and probably decreased the deaths. They didn't actually follow up the deaths. They just looked at who went into ICU. And they basically found that just by giving a, a multivitamin, not even a strong one, decreased the amount of people that were going into intensive care. We know that um, giving glutathione in this injection decreases the amount of people going into, uh, into intensive care. We know that injecting vitamin C decreases the amount of people going into intensive care. Um, and most recently, we found that injecting something called N-acetylcysteine, which is a precursor to glutathione, but N-acetylcysteine is something that every single hospital in the country has because it's the cure for paracetamol poisoning. Okay. N-acetylcysteine also has a work on bringing, um, improving immunity, bringing down inflammatory reactions, the stuff that's killing people with COVID. And they've shown that basically, and it's only a small trial so far, but N-acetylcysteine is incredibly safe. All hospitals have it. And they basically found out that basically everyone with COVID who they gave it to basically survived, basically, whereas yeah. when they didn't, people still died. So there are so many things out there when it comes to COVID that seem to knock it on its head, but hospitals just aren't using them. Okay, so with, with coronavirus, what, what the sense I'm getting, I don't know if you're, you're the same as this, is that our health system and our government might come up with a vaccine, but yeah. that may or may not work. Um, so we're gonna have to come up with answers ourselves it's our responsibility it's our health you know i don't think we, there's any point in us waiting around to get saved because i don't think anyone's going to come and save us what do you think that we could do you mentioned maybe some of the ideas here but mm. already but what could we do to take responsibility for our health to protect ourselves against the viruses out there well, at the very minimum, I'm just going to read out this list of these are the things that have been found to be low or very low, almost non-existent in people who are dying from coronavirus. And so um, we found that they have very low, almost non-existent levels of vitamin C. Um, nearly all of them have very low vitamin D. And we're also finding low levels of vitamin K, very low levels in selenium in many of them, and very low levels of zinc. And so we already know that vitamin D, I mean, in the over 80s, so giving vitamin D to over 80s in one single massive dose seems to have a protective effect and halves the amount of deaths. OK, mm. so it's pretty likely that vitamin D, just taking vitamin D is going to massively, at least 50 percent decrease your chances of death. But I would actually say that it's actually going to be better just make sure you eat a healthy diet i mean that is a given everyone should be eating more healthy but just start taking a multivitamin okay doesn't even have to be a particularly good one take a multivitamin that's got some a some b some c some d a bit of everything and then if you want to maybe take a little bit of extra vitamin d and i would definitely start taking some omega-3 supplements if you are if you're not a vegetarian then take fish oils and start eating like sardines and herring and, and small fish on a daily basis to get the protein and other stuff that you just find in the fish. Where if you're a vegetarian, um, you know, you have hemp seed, flaxseed oil, black, no, not black currant seed oil, um, hemp seed oil, um, flaxseed oil, and start having flax seeds and hemp in the diet just to get those oils. And look at increasing proteins as well. So eat a healthy diet. And even if you're not eating a healthy diet, I think a vitamins and multivitamins can help. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, Chris, we always like to um, wrap up with a challenge um, or a little mm -hmm. quest we can send people off on, and obviously I take part in that. And we'd like to do this really to just make the information that you're given practical. Mm -hmm. um, so, what one thing could people take away and put into action from what we've spoken about today? Yeah. Well. I know because we spoke briefly about this before, but I've got a couple of little ideas. Okay, one is go out and just take a multivitamin. Okay, and just see how you feel over the next few weeks. Just take a multivitamin. 
Um, if you are not a vegetarian, then start eating small fish uh, on a daily basis, on a, not even on a daily basis, like three or four times a week. Start eating small fish because you may find all kinds of different things happen to your health and your well-being. Um, so those are the sort of two sort of really simple things. But uh, can I can I mention the blood test? Yeah, sure. Mention. Do talk about that. Uh, yeah. Now, one of the things that I do as a practitioner is I actually look at people's blood tests because when you go to the doctor and you, I mean, so many people go to the doctor. So many of my patients, they complain that they've been to the doctors, they've had their blood test back, and it's all normal, and so nothing is done. But and this is this is so so critical and this can be a great education both for patients plus also for doctors is those normal ranges are basically based on what we can expect to find in people who haven't got any symptoms and most normal people aren't actually optimally healthy but what we have got with everything with with, with getting a normal and a normal blood test when you go to the doctor they look at red blood cells and white blood cells and a few other bits and pieces but there are optimal ranges within that that are really well researched. And one of the biggest ones, and the one that's most on topic, is your white blood cell count. Now, your white blood cell count, when you, when you look at the normal ranges, I think the normal ranges are expected to be between, I think it's four and 10. Okay, that's all you have to do, You're between four and 10. And that's not, if it's within those ranges, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> okay. But what we actually know is that if your white blood cell count is above six, you have an increased chance of dying from heart disease, cancers, I mean, diabetes, it, I mean, it just, it's just all sorts of things when it's above six. And so above six, it may be normal, but it's not healthy at all. So if you have been to the doctors with whatever, and they said it's normal, just, just do this one thing, look at your blood test results, look at your white blood cell count. And I'm just gonna actually check because I can't remember every single level off the top of my head all the time, but I did look it up. Yeah, if it's, and if it's below 3.5 or it's above six, you have a problem with your immune system somewhere or you have a problem with inflammation. There's something going wrong. Okay, so if it's above six, you've definitely got a problem. You definitely need your doctor to investigate it more. Or you find a healthcare practitioner that knows how to read an ordinary blood test that you get from your GP and tell you all the normal stuff that's not normal or optimal. So cool. that would be my challenge. Brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Always appreciate um, your time. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Something I found interesting about what Chris was just talking about here was the difference between what a health practitioner like Chris regards as being healthy and what a GP regards as being healthy. They're different. We found this when we were building Questly, when we were talking to people, you know, health and wellness professionals. There was always a difference between what the government or the GPs were saying and actually what a real health professional was, was telling us. Also really interesting was the information Chris gave us about COVID and the studies that have been done around vitamins. Um, fascinating. And we can all obviously do a lot more to protect ourselves if we choose to. I don't think anyone's gonna come and save us. I think we've got to do it ourselves. Will you take Chris's challenge? I mean, why not? It could be life-changing for you. Um, I'll be taking his challenge and I'll be reporting that in my monthly roundup. You can see my findings from this challenge in our challenge roundup video, which is a monthly summary covering all the challenges our experts shared. To get that video and all our latest health and wellness uploads, including interviews and reviews, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified whenever we post. And if this channel can help your friends and family, please share it with them too. Also, if you want to get proactive with your health, Total Wellness Club are developing health quests over at questly.life. Join while we're developing the site and get access to health quests that immediately personalize your health. You'll get to identify which of 10 critical health categories need your attention. You'll be able to track your progress and you'll be able to help us develop the platform. I'll put a link in the description below and I'll see you in the next video.